Modern warfare, how does it work? First, destabilize. The aggressor fuels trouble spots in the country of his target. He destabilizes the target country even to the point of civil wars. Second, how does he do this? First, he gets in contact with all unsatisfied groups that are ready to use violence, rebels and professional terrorists in the target country. He doesn't care whether these rebels ready for violence are soccer fans, religious fanatics, left-wing, right-wing or other radicals. They only have to be violence-prone, cold-blooded and loyal. The aggressor promises each group a better future the right to a voice and many other advantages. Thus everyone motivated, by whatever means, will fight for the assertion of his own individual goals. Each terrorist group formed in this way will temporarily accept even totally different groups. At the start, each group sees only advantages in the common striking power. The motto, synergy above all, strike together, march separately, Thus, the aggressor creates colorfully mixed terror groups. If one extremist group is not willing to mix with other of a different mindset, it is no problem for the aggressor. He uses them separately for exclusive goals, for instance, for suicide bombing and so on. Third, equipping and funding. He uses mercenaries of his own or even another country to train these rebel groups to become terrorist groups. If possible, it is done outside his target country. He builds secret training sites, preferably close to his target. If not, he also flies them in from everywhere. He supplies arms and ammunition to the rebels, as much as desired. He pays them for the battle. Fourth, the offensive. Now the foreign aggressor precisely puts into practice his battle plan. Depending on the strategy, he purposely attacks civilians and institutions too. His goal is to get as much international attention as possible to provoke a cry for foreign help. The focus of the media coverage of this isn't the organizing aggressor, of course, but either the bad government of the country to be overthrown or, if necessary, the rebels or terrorist cells. Fifth. The goals of the real aggressor are the same every time. Weaken the country from the inside as much as possible. Goal-oriented assignment of guilt to the targeted country. As much confusion and helplessness amongst the people as possible. Creating as much sympathy as possible for military intervention from outside the country. Overthrow and removal of the target government. Appointment of a new government consisting of noble rebels. Withdrawal of all troops, leaving the country to its own councils so that it may fall into complete chaos. Once again a radical intervention to wipe out all previously used heroes, now labeled terrorists. Taking over the country, that is, its resources. Paying reparations at leisure. Sixth, be celebrated as the great rescuer. Seventh, same procedure, but still bigger. What the aggressor did with motley rebel troops in single countries, he does in big style now. Whole countries are his appointed rebel troops now. With these, he encircles his greatest rivals he could never defeat alone. Previously, he fuels provocations and intentionally puts the blame on his greatest rivals. He causes his appointed rebel countries to go against his greatest rivals with their own weapons and armies. Not before all countries have shot their last ammunition, lost their best men and ruined themselves does the true enemy of mankind, the true aggressor and warmonger intervene to conquer them all. Who are the greatest losers? All who allowed this insidious aggressor and warmonger to deceive and use them.